Hey everybody and welcome back to my V-Blog Delta IV Productions where I display and discuss U.S. World War II airborne patches and patches from U.S. Army Special Forces in Vietnam. I apologize for the very long hiatus, but quite honestly, my plan was to make about three or four videos, which I did, and then see how much interest there was and there really wasn't much interest i have very few subscribers so rather than keep doing this i just thought well that's fine i can uh, just let it go uh, but i bought some uh, acquired some new patches over the last 10 months since i last uh, had a video here for you guys and i thought i'd just show them off here uh, the show of shows was just last week in Louisville. They had moved it from February to July because of the pandemic. And uh, I scored a few patches there. Uh, and then just wanted to show some other ones I'd gotten uh, in the last, like I said, nine, ten months. So welcome back. And uh, let's uh, get started here. Okay, so if I shared some of these with you uh, ten months ago, I apologize, uh, but I don't think I did. So these are some of the newer ones I've gotten uh, over the last 10 months or so during the pandemic. So this first one I'm showing you is uh, a very rare patch that uh, is associated with uh, the Battalion S2 or Intelligence Section of the 502nd Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 101st Airborne Division during World War II. And according to Mark Bando, uh, maybe 30 or less of these were made uh, and these are British made and this is a really clean example um, the few that I've seen sometimes have a lot of moth nips on them and you can see right here there's a little bit of moth nipping right there but not really it's a really nice looking patch and this was meant to wear on the lower sleeve now there's some debate as to whether or not if it was uh, ever worn uh, and there's also debate um, or at least uh, one of my patch mentors uh, a very advanced collector uh, doesn't even think that this was really made for uh, the S2 people of the 502nd uh, so there's a little bit of debate about what this patch is but the consensus is that it was made uh, by a member of the 101st for, uh, again, the Battalion S2 Intelligence Section. So this is one of my OSS, Office of Strategic Services, Riker Mounts. And I've got a couple of new patches in here that I wanted to share with you. Uh, the first one is the spearhead shoulder sleeve insignia right here. And supposedly only about 200 of these were manufactured, but they were never approved, and there's no evidence they were actually ever worn. Uh, but they were obviously manufactured. They are from the World War II era, and they were meant for somebody in the OSS. Um, so I think that's a really nice patch for the collection, and it's very difficult to find. This one here, bottom right, is Chinese made. And that is a first war area marauders patch and these were chinese who were uh, supplied and trained by u.s uh, oss personnel uh, in china uh, when they were fighting the japanese during the second world war and this patch um, i don't think it's this particular patch but this patch is pictured in a oss book about uh, OSS operations in China. So that's a really rare one as well. And then this middle special recon battalion patch. That's a new addition. That's Italian made. That's probably the one that most people want. Although this top one is Chinese made. And then this bottom one is US made, mostly for collectors. But you do find them sometimes on uniform. So these two, of course, are very well known patches. They're just a little bit different. Uh, they are both uh, OD or olive drab bordered patches, uh, which is, uh, those are a little bit more on the rare side. Uh, they're not super difficult to find, but they, they are difficult to find. It took me a little while to find both of these. Uh, 
the 101st Airborne on the right. Generally, it's believed this is a pre-war patch before it was an airborne division. But to me, it's probably the prettiest 101st patch World War II with the OD border. It has a white tongue and a green eye. Um, sometimes you will find a straight red and white airborne tab that goes across the top. So not an, an arc, uh, but a straight rectangular rectangular shape tab. Uh, and you can find that sometimes with this patch. And that's usually associated with the 326 Airborne uh, Engineer Battalion. So I'm on the hunt for one of those, if anybody knows uh, where to find one. I did find a, a good guy at uh, the Show of Shows, Advanced Collector who has uh, a couple, and uh, if he's willing to, to let one go, he said he'd give me a holler first, so uh, we'll see what happens. But again, uh, the patches, the divisions are well represented, of course, with uh, different variants of the shoulder sleeve insignia, but the OD, OD border, the olive drab border ones are, uh, are more on the rare side. This patch here is probably the rarest patch that I have. It's extremely rare, extremely difficult to find, and it's a pocket patch for the 551st Parachute Infantry Battalion, which really not a lot of people outside of airborne aficionados really know about, unfortunately. Uh, separate Infantry Battalion, Parachute Infantry Battalion. Uh, it was originally sent down to Panama early in the war. Um, with the idea that they might have to take a French-held island out in the Caribbean uh, that was, I think, being used for U-boat for resupply for the Germans. So these guys went down to Panama, uh, trained in jungle, jungle warfare techniques, um, and again, we're, we're, it was a plan to go into battle uh, on this French-held island. But the, I guess the administration on the French island... Um, went over to the free French side. Uh, and because of that, the 551st wasn't sent in there. But uh, they were sent to Western Europe and they actually made uh, their first combat jump uh, during the invasion of Southern Fa uh, France, uh, Operation Dragoon in August of 1944. They were part of the first airborne task force along with the 509th. Um, the 517th and some other units. Uh, they were then uh, sent in to help um, with the counteroffensive uh, during and right after the Battle of the Bulge. And unfortunately, uh, they were decimated uh, in a battle in Belgium in January of 1945, and the unit was disbanded. Uh, but this particular patch, again, it's a pocket patch, extremely, extremely rare. And this is one of those times where having contact with and building a network up of fellow collectors and uh, dealers really helps uh, because uh, you're not going to find this on, on eBay or, or with a dealer. That, I mean, chances are very, very rare. Uh, but a uh, an advanced collector friend of mine uh, contacted me and said, hey, I know a uh, gentleman who's uh, looking to get rid of his 551st pocket patch. Do you want it? And so I started uh, negotiating with this guy and got it. So really, really happy to have this. This is uh, really a find of a lifetime, really, for uh, a World War II Airborne patch collector. Uh, so I'm really happy. This is another really great patch I've been after for a long time. And I found it at the show of shows um, last week. So the show of shows, for those of you who don't know, is a massive show put on by the uh, Ohio Valley Military Society. It's a three-day show, 2,000 tables. Uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. They usually hold it every February, but because of the pandemic, it was moved to July. Uh, but it'll be back next February on schedule again. But um, great, great place to go and just look at things. It's almost like going through a museum sometimes. Um, but this patch here is a rare one. It's Italian made. 
and it's a pocket patch for the Fifth Army Airborne Training Center, which was initially located in Morocco, and then moved to Sicily, and then finally to mainland Italy near Rome uh, at the end of the war. And this was a uh, jump school, essentially, uh, for... Uh, replacements in the Mediterranean, people who needed to go to jump school for whatever reason. Um, they also trained OSS people, I believe, there um, to, to get jump qualified. So really neat patch. Uh, and I was roaming uh, the, the hall there on day one, came across it, a guy had it out for sale, and it, he didn't want a lot for it. Uh, so I was very surprised, uh, and quite honestly, because of the, the low price, what I thought was a pretty low price, I sent pictures of it to some advanced collectors, some friends of mine, and they said, yeah, that's a good one, great price, and get it. So really, really pleased. That's probably my favorite find uh, from the show of shows. So this is another rare one that uh, I picked up several months ago from a... Uh, an advanced collector who was clearing out his collection. And again, uh, knowing people, introducing yourself uh, can, can get you patches like this. And this is either Japanese made or some people think it was made in, in the Philippines somewhere. Uh, but it's a really pretty patch. Uh, not very many were made to begin with. There's information about this patch and a picture of another patch uh, of, of the same, same type, same unit. In one of the in the uh, Keller Emblems of Honor uh, Airborne book, and uh, this is a patch for the 11th Airborne Division's reconnaissance platoon, and so they saw action uh, in the Philippines near the end of the war. Um, so a really pretty patch, really cool, kind of an obscure unit, not too many people know about, but a very collectible uh, patch. So the two patches on the ends I've showed you before, those are snake bite pocket patches. Uh, those were TDY teams uh, from the 1st Special Forces Group on Okinawa uh, who went to Vietnam, um, TDY to SOG. Uh, but the patch in the middle is new. I just found that last week at the show of shows. Uh, and that's what a lot of people call a, a, either a shell burst or bomb burst patch, a SOG uh, bomb burst patch or shell burst patch. and. Uh, this one's kind of a generic uh, pocket patch, but the neat thing about it is the construction is really, really nice because it's a Taiwanese-made patch. Um, these saw guys would go uh, to Taiwan uh, quite often for R&R &R and have patches made there, and they were really high-quality patches. So that's a really neat one. And this is another one of those deals where, you know, if you know people, just give them a call and they'll hold things for you. This came from Jason Hardy at the dog tag. Uh, I called Jason about a week before the show and said, hey, uh, there are some patches on your website. Can you bring them to the show in Louisville? Hold them for me, put them aside, and yeah, no problem. So that way you get there no matter when you, when you see them. Nobody's going to buy them because you got them off to the side for me. So pretty cool patch. So these patches, I think, are pretty cool. Uh, I picked them up because they are SOG related. And I think I got two from the dog tag and two from Bob Chat at Vintage Productions. Uh, so these are TAS patches, but more specifically, they were meant for Covey Riders. A Covey Rider was an experienced SOG recon team man uh, who flew with uh, Air Force pilots either in an 01 Bird Dog, uh, a small Cessnas, an 02 Skymaster, I think later in the war, OV-10 Broncos. And they were kind of the eyes in the sky for recon teams on the ground. And so they, these aircraft and the Covey Riders, the, the SOG recon men who were now riding up in the aircraft with Air Force guys, pilots, um, would help the SOG teams on the ground when they got in trouble or uh, help them find insertion and extraction points, um, called in airstrikes, tactical air support for the, for the teams on the ground. And uh, you can see that this patch here, Prairie Fire, 
and then Prairie Fire down here, Covey here, and you see Snoopy is wearing a green beret in both these cases here. So TAS is Tactical Air Support Squadron. Uh, so these would have been worn maybe as pocket patches or on flight suits of the SOG guys. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've seen that. So this one here is neat. Fat Capper, and you can see Jiminy Cricket here wearing a green beret. FAC is Forward Air Control. That's what that is. Fat Capper was the call sign for the Covey Riders uh, in Thailand in Nakhampanam. NKP, uh, which SOG called Mobile Launch Team 3. And that was kind of a backdoor into Laos from the west as opposed to going in um, from Vietnam on the eastern side uh, to get into Laos. Heavy Hook, which you see down here, was the code name for that mobile launch site or that mobile launch team uh, in Thailand. So pretty cool patches. So I do have a few more patches, uh, but I'll save those for another video, hopefully, if I can get motivated to do it. Uh, so thanks for watching Delta Four Productions, and I'll try to get some, like I said, a few more videos out. Um, if you are interested in any of the patches I have or have any questions about them or where to find them, how to find them, uh, please don't hesitate to uh, leave a comment, and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.